So as you might know, I've been a Notion user since the first upload on this channel. I manage my to-dos, everything that's work-related, our video production flows, even our AI research in it. And as they announced a complete revamp to all their AI features, let's just say I was intrigued to say the least. And rather than me telling you about it, let me just show you what it can do. This is our database that we use to research all new AI releases every week. And let's say I wanted to take the AI releases and turn them into Instagram posts over the next month on my Instagram account. I could say something like create a 30 day Instagram content calendar from entries in the past 14 days. And then all I need to do is add context and pick the page with all of the research that we have there anyway. Okay, without me doing anything, it just created this database with all of the info. There's a draft of the caption for the post amazing it categorized the posts and added a status field and there's even multiple views let's look at the calendar view oh yeah look at that it has a different post for every single day could open it up see the captions draft i mean seriously this just works and by the way everything in this video including this demo is first take no editing we're not redoing multiple prompts to show you the one that worked just showing off the product as is. As you might know, I already used Notion a ton. And when they reached out to sponsor a video about the new AI features, I was intrigued to say the least. I looked at them and I was like, let's do it. So thank you to Notion for sponsoring this video. Let me show you what this complete overhaul of their AI features, Notion 3.0 as they call it, entails and how to use it for yourself. So basically you can find a lot of the new AI features here under this tab, Notion AI. But it's also available on any page under this icon on the bottom right. If you just click this little face, this is Notion AI and it can work with any pages you have and so much more as you'll see in a second because this interface allows you to add context here on top so you can add any page that you have or multiple pages or database or whatever here you write your prompt and one amazing thing is that you get all sorts of models at least all the biggest ones in here so everything else is about picking context but this one field selects which model you want to use so maybe you prefer the writing of sonnet 4.5 or you prefer the analytical thinking abilities of gpt 5.1 or maybe you like 2.5 pro for code generation or its ability to organize whatever the case may be you can pick any model in here or just let it auto route depending on the tasks and then down here you can even add attach external files. It can now finally take PDFs. So you can not just add your pages, you can also add PDFs, or you can run a deep research where it scours the web for a while and brings the information in. And if that's not enough, then they have a ton of connectors now that you can bring in. I'll talk about those in a second. And then if you have setups that you like, this is something I won't be covering in depth here, you could always go to personalize. So let's put a cat on this guy's head, call this one Igor's organizer, and then you could do different custom instruction templates within here. So maybe we'll keep the organizer minimalist and you could really flesh out the agent's identity in here and add specific context that it has access to so that if you find yourself doing specific things with the Notion agent regularly, you could just make that the default and be even quicker at it. I'm still exploring this myself. So I think the biggest game changer is just the way it interacts with all the databases and the pages because if I look at my Instagram content calendar that I created from one simple prompt and I was like hmm maybe I want a second caption draft well let's not even talk about what the process there would look like if I were to do it manually with copy pasting prompting you could just go in here and say create a second caption column again first try Ah, and to be fair, I didn't ask it for actual captions, just for the column. So I'll tell it that, add alternative captions, and let's watch them appear together. It pulls in every entry in that database. It's planning the update. And yeah, you can see it unfold in real time. It looked at all 30 pages now. And look at that, just like that, it appears in the right field. Amazing, especially considering that I used to do this myself manually to create all the prompt databases for this channel, newsletter, courses, all that. Now it just appears. Magic. If you enjoy the style or the content of this walkthrough, subscribe to the channel. We do tutorials like this all the time. Okay, let me show another really cool thing that you can do with this, which is not just spin up databases, but in the community, we ran a lot of events. So if I just look for events in the search, I'll immediately see the event creation internal SOP, which basically means standard operating procedure, aka a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do something within a company. So here's our event SOP. And let's say I haven't done that before. I'll just click the Notion button here, which will open the agent interface from here. And I'll just say, create an event preparation document for me. And I'll add another page as context, Igor bio. I know I have it somewhere. Yeah, Igor bio, perfect. I'll just send this. That's it. So I didn't give it any context here on what kind of event to make. It'll have to come up with that. Also, I didn't give it context, but it does have context on what is needed for the event, this SOP, kind of 
tells you exactly what needs to be done for an event to run. And Notion AI, well, before I even finish the sentence, created this brand new page, event preparation template. Okay, so as I didn't give it a topic, it just created this nice little template for me. Not bad. So let's just say, let's fill it out on the topic of AI use cases for entrepreneurs. And then just for fun, I'll try and give it the AI use case database where we track all the new releases. See what it does here. All right, all of this seems good. And then it tells me, hey, it can do these things. What about pulling in some data from this database to replace the draft lists and add links? So sometimes it asks you, especially if you're not specific about what you want to do, which I think is actually good. So look, here it pulls up a bunch of entries. And there you go. It took some of the news stories and just built the agenda for this event for me. Like, imagine the possibilities. Basically, anything you need to do, if you have it in Ocean, you can just link it. If you don't, just upload it via PDF or use the deep research, which we'll talk about in a second. And then it just combines all of it, creates pages, databases, templates for you right in the app where you would use them anyway. Amazing. Talking about the deep research, let me show you that. Basically, they have a built-in version of deep research now where you just go to the Notion AI, you click this research button, and then we can type in something like five 100 YouTube blog articles about ChatGPT. YouTube blog articles? What do I even mean with that? Anyway, it pulled together 100 YouTube video topics used by leading AI content creators and educators, and it came up with this list of titles for ChatGPT-related YouTube videos or blogs. And yeah, there's 100 of them. With a click of a button, I can save them as a page. There's that page. So as you can see, you can interact with all the data you have with a Notion, or you can research for new data, or you can even upload PDFs. But what if data isn't available in Notion or as a PDF or in the internet? What if maybe there's a Slack channel in which your team discusses all progress on a project and you want to bring that in as context to connectors? That's what they're for here. And they integrate with Notion AI now. So you could go in here, connect any one of these apps, Google Drive, Slack, your calendar, and you can bring that context in to if you enable them. And then it's just up to you selecting what kind of context you want to use, what pages, what attachments, whether you're using integrations or not at all. You could also enable a basic web search. It just becomes simpler than ever to pull together data from different sources. And that's just the nature of working digitally. It's not going to be all in one source. Notion AI can bring it together. And that brings me to the last point. And this is one I really like. And actually, I find myself using this the most out of all of these features. And that is their AI search. So let's just search for event because we have so many event related things. Up here, you can say search all sources with AI. And it's going to look through my entire Notion, but also all the connected applications and find everything relating to event. That is a very broad term. It found 61 results, but you can see it found the SOP. It found the pages it created now. Heck, it found even to-do items for my personal to-do list. It found our event summarizer tool, just everything relating to it. And the best part is you can keep working with this and everything is cited. It shows you where it got this information from precisely. Pretty amazing, no? So for example, here, if I want all event procedures, then I could just say all event procedures and it will further filter it. This is not just searching for a keyword. It's working with all of the information, which is what you really want. Okay, so it narrowed it down to 57 results and it gives me the high level outlines of all the essential SOPs. So no matter how much data you have in here, you just let AI search over all of it, including all the connectors that you set up. So if I wanted to look for a specific topic, like let's say ChatGPT, there's gonna be a lot of ChatGPT across my documents, found all the database entries, all the files, all the scripts. Look at that, these are all the tools and features we're tracking from the use case database recently. I could say mentions in the past 30 days, and now it's going to filter all the work we've done on ChatGPT over the past 30 days, rather than looking everything across multiple years. Yeah, exactly. New York Times, Swing ChatGPT, Atlas release, pools, instant checkout, perfect. And if I weren't sure, I could just click it and see where it got the info from. Ah, yes, the YouTube video description of a video. Makes sense. I use this all the time, to be honest. Okay, so it's really good at bringing in all the data. What about security, though? Well, first of all, Notion does no training on your data, and neither do the LLM providers. Secondly, the data is encrypted during transit. And thirdly, they're SOC2 compliant, which is the standard that all of the main AI platforms uphold to. Additionally, admins get really granular control over who gets which connector and what kind of file access. So you could control which departments or users get access to what. So yeah, there you go. Most of this is available to try on the free plan the connectors and the research are on the business plan, but hey, makes sense. It takes a lot of compute to run those. Yet again, thank you to Notion for sponsoring this video. This is something I immediately hopped on myself anyway. And with that being said, my name is Igor, and I hope you have a wonderful day.